as I'm trying to teach not just the astrology, but how to be an astrologer, the homework from last week was to actually go out and begin watching the sky. Become aware of that external universe that Joe Tish is actually watching. Today, we're going into the philosophical, the mental foundation for what Joe Tish is working in. In this way, we have the proper holding to be utilizing all these Vedic astrology techniques. There's more philosophy that we have to learn. Tons, 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 but we're just skimming over some of the important things. So the Veda has these four parts. Those are the Vedas. So when I say Vedas, I mean that whole section of reality we just talked about. That's what I mean when I say Vedas. Okay? Let's be clear about that. Now the Vedas have six limbs, one of which is Jyotish, but there's five other limbs. One arm isn't enough to do something. You need two arms and two legs. We need multiple limbs to accomplish our task. So these other branches of the Vedas are important to know and understand. When the Vedas are personified as a person, they're called the Veda Purusha. The six limbs are Shiksha, which is phonetics, Vyakarana, which is grammar, Narupta, which is the breaking down of words and understanding their meaning, Kalpa, which is ritual, Chandas, which is the chanting in meters, and then Vedic astrology. Page 32 goes into Shiksha. Even the word is a little interesting for English. It's Sha, like a normal sha, sh, 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 sha, sha. There's three S's in Sanskrit. There's sha, sha, and sa. And so we have two different S's here. We have sha and sha. So it's shik, sha. This is pronunciation and the science of pronunciation. Pronunciation is an entire science. This is one of my weakest areas on a level of skill. It's one that I've worked the most on. In that way, I know lots about it. How good I am at it is another story. Pronunciation is considered the nose or the breath of the Vedas. And breath is what gives prana. It's what keeps us alive. We cannot eat for so many days, we cannot do so much, but we, if we stop breathing, we're dead very quickly. In this way, pronunciation is very important to the life of the Vedas. It is said that wrong chanting can actually give different results than we're actually intending, or not give us the full results. In this way, as we're doing mantras, and in Vedic astrology, one of our main remedies is mantras. So these mantras, we need to know how to say them properly. At the back in the appendix of this book, I have given uh, a pronunciation guide for Sanskrit, which I consider absolutely important for any Vedic astrologer to have knowledge of the Sanskrit alphabet. All the mantras are in the Sanskrit alphabet, which has approximately 50 letters, where the English alphabet has only 26. So those letters and their pronunciation need to be understood, and then putting them together need to be understood. There's a lot more here. I'm going to let you read that. Uh, page 34. We have... This is a technique in the realm of pronunciation, in the Vedanga of Shiksha. This is called a Ganapata. And what it is, is in English we have things called tongue twisters, and you say them real fast and they make you say things wrong. You can't say it right. 
in this branch, they have tongue twisters that make you say things right. So you just, this right here is, is for the Gayatri Mantra. And by chanting this, which if you look, there is a link where you can download how to chant this. Um, being chanted by a, somebody who, whose main practice is the chanting of this. If you chant this, this will make you pronounce the Gayatri Mantra properly. You won't have a choice. It's a tongue twister to make you say it correct. Our next Vedanga is Vyakarana, which is grammar. And grammar is the mouth of the Vedas. They feed the Vedas. They give it that nourishment, that sustenance. And grammar is very important in that in order to convey an idea, we have to say it with a certain level of grammar that gets the information from me to you, from you to the next person. Without grammar, we kind of take it for granted because we learn it so young in life. But without grammar, very um, intricate ideas and philosophies can't be communicated. Grammar allows us to convey an idea very succinctly. And if we want to take an example in Jyotish, there might be a verse in Parasha or something else. Is it saying this will happen or this has happened? In India, when you go to the Nadi readers, they sit there and one of the readings that I had says, You've been studying Ayurveda because in your past life you were an Ayurvedic doctor. You will also study some healing with your hands because in a past life in Mongolia you were a healer with your hands. So the differentiation of time there is done based upon grammar. This is an important understanding and an important branch, Vedanga. So you can see that if somebody wants to begin studying Vedas, they can just start chanting. They can start understanding the meaning of the Vedas, or they can start studying just pronunciation and Sanskrit. <clears throat> What's important to understand is we have to be supplementing our Jyotish learning with these broader fields to really be getting the full understanding of Jyotish. The next branch is Chandas which is the feet of the Vedas, or the legs. What do the feet or the legs do? They get you places. They make you move, locomotion. In this way, the meter of the different verses are what are taking you places. There's seven primary uh, chandas in the Vedas. There's multiple others and, and multiple variations of them. But seven primary. And just as an example, the Gayatri is 24 syllables. It's three verses that are eight syllables each. This is what Gayatri Chanda is. There's multiple mantras written in Gayatri Chanda. <laughs> The three, as we haven't gone into the Vishnu forms yet, but there's one form of Vishnu who conquered the world in three steps that's connected to Jupiter. Those three steps are the three steps of Gayatri, and they show the blessings, the bhagya, the good luck that is invoked with the mantra. Where we have another mantra that's called, uh, another chandas called Anustup. And Anustup is 32 syllables. It's four lines, eight syllables. Now, this is considered a chandas that invokes devotion. The whole uh, parashara is written in Anastup chanda. An important part, besides just the devotion aspect, is the Vedas themselves 
were taught before there was written language. Written language evolved later. And thereby, these books weren't written. Even originally, Brahat Parsar Horse Shastra was not written. It was passed orally. And by putting it into a chanda, by putting it into a meter, it can be sung. And by singing it, it's easily memorized and can be passed and remembered. If you forget a word, you know you've forgotten a word because it's not the right tune. So there's multiple reasons why chandas is important. One is just the transmission of the information, the memory of the information, and two, what is the purpose of the information? Where is it taking you? This is chandas.